Was America just attacked? We had now been put on notice that our communication infrastructure is extremely vulnerable. Michael Snyder reports, what would we do if we suddenly could not use the internet or phones any longer? For a lot of people, such a scenario would be unthinkable. In fact, it felt like the world was ending for many at AT&T customers on Thursday. The disruption to AT&T's network only lasted a few hours, but it created quite a frenzy. If we're going to see this much panic for an outage that happens for just a few hours, what would our society look like if internet and phone communication was down for days, weeks, or even months? Once the outage began, federal authorities moved very rapidly to determine whether it was a cyber attack or not. Federal agencies are urgently investigating whether the massive cellular out outage at, uh, that plagued Americans on Thursday was a cyber attack. The Federal, uh, federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, and Department of Homeland Security, DHS, are on the hunt to track down what disrupted services at AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and a dozen other cellular providers. While the agencies have not shared details, a security expert told Daily Mail that the outage has hallmarks of a hack. Lee McKnight, associate professor at Syracuse University, New York, said the widespread nature appears to be a massive distrib distributed denial of service, DDoS, attack on core internet infrastructure. I have a feeling that they will assure the general public that it was not a cyber attack, no matter what they discover. In situations such as these, keeping everyone calm is often deemed more important than telling them the truth. Interestingly, pharmacies all over the U.S. were also having prob major problems on Thursday due to a cyber attack against one of the biggest healthcare technology companies in the nation. Pharmacies all over the country are experiencing delays in prescription orders due to a cyber attack on one of the biggest healthcare technology companies in the nation, Change Healthcare. Change Healthcare first noticed the cybersecurity issue affecting its networks on Wednesday morning on the East Coast. According to Change Healthcare, it appears that a nation state associated cybersecurity threat actor was involved in that attack. In a statement, the firm said that it had identified a suspected nation-state associated cybersecurity threat actor had gained access to some of the change healthcare information technology systems. Are the issues at AT&T and the issues at change healthcare related? I have a feeling that they are, but I certainly cannot prove that. In any event, the truth is that we have just been put on notice. Our communication infrastructure is extremely vulnerable and it can be attacked at literally any moment. Today, there are a number of foreign powers that possess very robust cyber attack capabilities. One of them is China, and the Washington Post is reporting on a trove of leaked documents that show that the Chinese are attempting large-scale systematic cyber intrusions against foreign governments, companies, and infrastructure. A trove of leaked documents from a Chinese state-linked hacking group shows that Beijing's intelligence and military groups are attempting large-scale, systematic cyber intrusions against foreign governments, companies, and infrastructure, with hackers of one company claiming to be able to target users of Microsoft, Apple, and Google. The cache, containing more than 570 files, images, and chat logs, offers an unprecedented look inside the operations of one of the firms that Chinese government agencies hire for on-demand mass data collecting operations. Of course, I have no idea if China was involved in the incidents that we witnessed today, but without a doubt, the Chinese have some of the most advanced cyber attack capabilities in the entire world. On Thursday, U.S. Senator Marco Rubio ominous, ominously warned that uh, what about China, uh, about what China could do to us if a full-scale war breaks out. I don't know the cause of the AT&T outage, said Senator Michael Rubio from Florida, top Republican in the Intelligence Committee, but I do know that it will be a hundred times worse when China launches a cyber attack on America on the eve of 
a hashtag Taiwan invasion. And it won't be just cell service they hit, it will be your power, your water, and your bank, he went on. And he's right. But the Russians have similar capabilities, and so do the North Koreans. Needless to say, it's, just, it's not just our enemies that we need to be concerned about. An article that USA Today just posted explained that there are many ways that natural disasters could cause communication disruptions for an extended period of time. While cell service in the U.S. is typically fairly dependable and Thursday's issues were limited in scope, there's a long list of potential emergency situations where cell phones could become unreliable, according to Alisa Provencio, professor at the University of Central Oklahoma, who oversees the Disaster Management Certificate Program. Communication issues are the norm in a disaster, not an anomaly, Provencio said. Some scenarios like snowstorms, strong wind, torrential rain, fire, and tornadoes may affect a small number of people. Others like major earthquakes, solar flares, or cyber attacks have the potential to disrupt communications for millions of people for an extended period of time. Let's talk about solar activity for a moment, because it's just a matter of time before a massive solar storm fries our communication infrastructure and our politicians have not been prepared for such an event. The Earth experienced a direct hit from an enormous solar storm in 1859, and if such a storm hits us today, the consequences would be catastrophic. An AT&T fell victim to a solar flare in 1972 that interrupted landline services. The storm that hit Earth was compared to the event in 1859, known as the Carrington event, which saw the most intense geomagnetic storm in recorded history. If such a solar storm were to happen in today's world, the effects would be catastrophic in our communication systems. A meteorologist shared online that a solar flare had erupted from the sun around midnight on Thursday night, noting that the timing is interesting. This is one of the reasons why many of us are watching solar activity so closely. On Thursday, the most powerful flare of solar cycle 25 was unleashed, and if scientists determined that it's heading directly to Earth, we could have a major problem on our hands. Earth orbiting satellites have just detected an X 6.3 class solar flare from sunspot AR3590, February 22nd. This is the strongest solar flare of cycle 25, and the third X flare the sunspot has produced in a 24-hour period. Stay tuned for updates about this explosion, especially whether or not it has hurled a CME towards our Earth. Hopefully we will not have to face such a scenario anytime soon, but USA Today says, there are some things that all of us should be doing to prepare for the day when some type of emergency does cause extended disruption. Cash, it's good a good idea to have cash on hand. In cash, you can't use mobile payment options or ATMs are down, said James Kendra. Paper copies of important documents. One of the things that I stress to everyone is to have paper copies of all your important documents, he said. That means a printed uh, out bank statements, you have all your account numbers a printed insurance statement, phone bill, and mortgage or rent documents so that you have the numerous uh, numbers available you might typically go online to get. Landline, if you don't have a landline, you might be able to use your cell and send SMS messages or use Wi-Fi to send messages or make calls. A radio, this is always a good thing to have to receive emergency updates from Provencio said. I think that having a solar-powered radio is so important. The global events spin widely out of hand, out of control, so you'll want to have access to news and information. We are really are living in unprecedented times. In all of human history, there has never been a cyber war, and so we don't know what exactly what one would look like. But it's clear that our communication infrastructure is extremely vulnerable, and we, what we just witnessed would definitely be a wake-up call for all of us. This is by Michael Snyder on the Economic Collapse blog. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.
about the author Michael Snyder's extremely controversial book entitled Chaos, available on paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. He's also written seven other books that are available on Amazon, including End Times, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commission Concerned. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes it by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, Most Important News, and he always freely and happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. You can connect with Michael on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and share his articles on your own social media accounts. It's definitely a great help. These are such troubled times that people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.